In this video, we're gonna talk about my $6 million Tesla trade. We'll walk through what I'm looking at. We'll walk through an options calculator that will show you how to see roughly what you'll get for gains with an options contract over time or losses. These aren't guaranteed. We'll look at the charting behind Tesla and why I believe it's gonna do what it is, which isn't that much. And then we'll look at some of the financials and drivers behind it. So to start off with, here's my bet. I currently have 104 Tesla $330 calls that expire in June 18th of 2026. If you guys have questions about options and how they work, realize they're complicated mechanisms. You can lose everything you put into them. It's not like holding a stock. If you want to learn more, watch my Options 101 video at the end of this. But my bet is that the 104 contracts that I bought for an average of $2,504 apiece for a total of $260,399.77, this is what I bought it for, currently down 12%, that these will turn into contracts that are worth six million dollars by the end of June when it comes time to expire and I say this because I believe we're going to get to the 920 ish range 925 roughly by that time I think that's perfectly reasonable and I'll explain why and again if, if it happens sooner I make more money that's how this stuff works even if we made it to seven hundred dollars in the next two years, I would make $3.8 million off of an investment of roughly 260000 So this is, a, this is an asymmetric bet. I'm betting that it could go up 300% from here, and I, and I would get, worst case, 1,454% or 14x, roughly. A little bit lower. All right, why am I making this bet? So first off, there's four, I believe, major shelves in Tesla's history. You can see where they were originally created. Very unprofitable company. I'll actually show you some of that over here uh, in the charts. We'll switch to yearly time frame. And look at what things used to be. Like, we're only going back to 2012. So let's go back over here. So around that time, this company was worth about $2.40. But let's look at what it looked like. They weren't delivering anything. Now, what happened over time from 2013 to 2014, we had a massive surge and, and peaked about August 2014. Let's look here at what happened between 2013 and 14. Look at this. Revenue segments. We got to, what what is it, $3.74 in in... Uh, in revenue. Now we're sitting significantly above that with about a hundred billion across the board almost uh, per quarter, per year. Back then we were only doing much smaller numbers. We went from 2 billion to like 3.13. And if we look at like net income around that time, it was red and flat. It was like, this is a dead company. But that still didn't stop us from getting up into the 18, you know, the $26 range. Now, we did trend sideways for years, right? 1,800 days. But here's the argument I'll make. This was all the S, the X, really hard ramps, um, no profit coming in because they didn't have economies of scale. And then this area over here was like the Model 3 introduction where we got up to like $25. And that was painful. And you can see where the stock just dropped off and plummeted. But what happened after that? Now, this company, this is going back to 2019-ish, right? Let's look at how we were doing in 2019. Revenue segments sitting at about $24 billion a year to 2020. Let's just look at that. From, from, from $22 billion, $23 billion a year in revenue segments up to about $30 billion. Not a huge increase at all in revenue, correct? Like right now... If you look at 2020, 30 billion is nothing compared to the 100 that we're pulling in right now, right? We're more than 3x, about 3.2x higher than we were in 2020. And yet, let's look at what the price was in, at the end of 2020. It was 250. It had 10x by that time, right? Eventually, 33xing, over 33x, roughly, 32. 
by the time we peaked at, in October of 2021. And again, if we look at financials here for October of 2021, we were up to a whopping $53 billion. We've still doubled that since 2021. We've doubled that. In 2020, 2020 to 2021, we actually went from a net income of $700 million for the entire year to $5.5 billion. And now we're at $15 billion in net income. And this number is going to continue to grow. We can see this in estimates. We can see this one time, you know, one time event that brought EPS up a lot. But look at this. The revenue is continuing to grow. The EBIT is going up. The EPS per share is going up. When we look at the charts on this, look at Tesla supercharging stations. Inventories and supply are, are fine. They're doing good. Net ar margins are climbing Profit per vehicle has started to stabilize. This is in a, this is at a time where vehicle sales are plummeting, used car sales are plummeting, and this company is still maintaining. And look at energy storage deployed. Even though rates are as high as they are, look at the numbers they're pulling in for this right now. Solar generation is in decline. But again, solar generation, at least energy storage, has government subsidies, and these are companies that are willing to take on multi-year plans like decade plans because they need this stuff now and they're getting heavily incentives from around the world, parts of Europe, United States, everywhere, right? Solar generation doesn't have that same incentive plan right now. And so it's more for like retail, commercial, stuff like that, but they have high interest rates. So these things are going to start to get better because interest rates are going to start to lower in the next couple of months and or at least that narrative is going to kick off. And so you're going to see people that are like, ah, maybe we should take out a loan for that. We can always adjust it later. And so you're going to see just like housing, just like auto starting to take off, which this sector is heavily dependent upon. You're going to see solar coming up as well and energy storage as lending becomes more cheap. But look at the Tesla deliveries of vehicles. They're still doing great. And here's the thing. I'm going to get my cyber truck in a couple months, right? Here's what's amazing about that. Sure, I'm getting it pretty quickly. I'm getting it pretty quickly. I ordered this thing probably the next day, and I'm still able to get it after an, you know production started, maybe in April or May. But I'm paying an extra $20,000 to get the Foundation Series. So they're raking me over the coals. Why? Because they've got such high demand for this vehicle that they can request a premium for it to offset additional expenses while they ramp. So, and then Tesla's working on the two, and then they slowed down the deployment of, of uh, Mexico, which I think is smart. So th there are risks with this investment. I want to be clear. There are risks with this. But I think they're pretty limited over two and a half years. Tesla has robotics, autonomy, they have energy. They have the Cybertruck ramp. They have the Model 2 out by then and, and being ramped initially by the time that this, this June 2026 time frame hits. So you've had the Semi out there. You've had the Cybertruck out there. You've had the Model 2 out there. You got the refresh on the Model 3 and the Model, and the Model Y. You have the, the factories ramping up and really getting up to speed and scale, especially in Texas, which is great. It's smart that they don't, it's smart that they really spin up hard in Texas and get these next gens going in one, one factory before they push on to the next one. But we're still going to see massive growth here. We're going to see massive growth across this, this stock um, in, in regard to deliveries. And again, with rates coming down, look at their cash pile alone. Even their Bitcoin stack is growing. If these guys put another billion in Bitcoin, that alone could set them a sale. And look at these, just the, the profit margins across all these different sectors, their operating leverage, literally just expanding beyond what, what their operating expenses are in a dramatic fashion. And they've lowballed the entire year by setting expectations low. I'm sorry, like Elon is playing chess, the others are playing checkers. There is so much going on with this company right now. And all people can think about is the fact that they're mad that they bought this stock when the PE was 1400 in October of 2021 or something like that. They, they it, Now it's 40. The PE ratio is 40. And all I'm asking this thing to do is to go up to 900 or even, even... Let's just say that it gets to this first fib, creates a new all-time high, 
1800 days after the other. And here's the thing, Tesla is in so much better position than they were over here. So much better. Industry leading. Again, their chargers are everywhere. The government is backing the chargers and paying them for them, for their charging infrastructure. And they have the largest charging infrastructure in the world by far. Tesla is leading on all fronts. And if autonomy takes off in the next two years, my God. So I'm looking for anywhere between like 600 and 940, or I'm sorry, 925. But I honestly, I honestly think we might get up to the 1600 range. And I know that might sound crazy to you. That's 800% more than we're at today. But does it really look that crazy when we look at history? It looks perfectly aligned with history. And then we have all these fundamental reasons why this should happen. So let's just expand this out. Let's look at what happens if it only gets to 600 and if it goes to 1700. Let's look at our calculator here and see what this bet turns into. All right, so let's start small. Let's look at 600. Now we're going out two and a half years, actually technically 2.4 if we wanna be really accurate. And we're saying that we got to, in this case, it's underneath, right? It's only 583, so this is a little bit lower. It's actually probably about a thousand percent gain for me. A, a 10Xer, a 10Xer, a 10 bagger, right? Really close to that, off of a 233% gain would give me $2.47 million. So again, roughly a 10 bagger. Now, what happens if it gets at the top end of that? Let's say Tesla just starts to explode and autonomy takes off, or the robotics division kicks off, or Dojo turns into something real and people need it for AI, or they just keep executing the way, the way they are with the car division and the energy. That's that. It, this could happen with that. And it got to 1700, I would have 54X roughly 14 am i reading this right 14 million dollars on the top end so this is what i'm trying to say is that from what i believe to not be insane i mean when you look at what this company is doing you look at their reg revenue segments and how energy and services are starting to grow and then there's all there's the fact that they have this software ecosystem there's the fact that cogs keep dropping every single quarter. Like, there's so many things that these guys are doing right. And then you have them qualifying for just about every incentive that's out there. You have, again, energy gross margins growing at a rate that's quicker now than auto or services. And again, Elon said this was the biggest part of the business. Again, look at cogs. Look at cogs. Average selling price versus cogs. Cogs are still going down. They're going down every quarter. This They're making these things cheaper. I just don't know what to say. There is so much behind this that is beneficial to this company right now. So many things that could set it off. you got the instant credit for the federal credit. It's instant now. And all we need to do is get past Q1 and stuff is really going to start to take off. So i think this is very feasible i think what i'm showing you here is not crazy by any means even if it just hit this first rung in two and a half years i make two and a half million dollars and if it goes to the top i make 14 million 14 million so i'm just shooting for the middle around six i think that's reasonable i think it's doable and i think it's way more than the 260 that i put into it and at the same time, I don't have this issue with capital that other people have by having a much larger stock position. I'm only doing 260K, but I'm probably getting credit for a million, right? At least. So this is how this is how I trade. This is how I do asymmetric bets. If you want to learn more about that, again, I've got the options video down below. Options aren't for everyone. Take the time to actually understand them. I believe I've created the best options video out there. I hope that you find it valuable and it helps you understand. I hope this example with Tesla gives you an idea of kind of what you can do with asymmetric opportunities when you're looking at options over long dated time frames, which gives you time to win. Now, this is only a $330 strike, guys. 
anything above 330, even if it just tested all time highs, you would be in the money. You would be in the money. So even if it just tested all time highs, let's say it got to 424 by the end of this, right? Like right around the 420s range, which is what it got up to before. Uh, that would be 172% from here and it would give you 527% in gains. Again, this is a leverage play to the upside that operates with a multiplier versus the underlying and that multiplier can be significant. 7x, 8x. And if, if Tesla's price drops from here, all I'm going to do is just buy more. That's all I'm going to do. So I hope it does. I hope it goes down and I hope I'm able to get more of it. But you can see here where we're garnering support. If I zoom in, you can see where this looks supportive. And I think that this could happen. So again, you know, do your review, figure this out for yourself. I'm not a financial advisor, but I personally think this is going to be a major success and I'm excited about it. Love you guys. Take it easy. Talk to you later.